Welcome back to Postmortem Radio. I'm your host, Oz, joined, as always, by my fellow critics and esteemed colleagues. We'll start off with the blonde in front. Katie, how are we doing tonight? Very, very, very well. I am gobbly, gobbly good. Gobbly, gobbly good. Ready for some leftovers. Oh, right. there's no leftovers. <laughs> there are no leftovers, my friend. <laughs> I was waiting for Jay to, to, to coin that phrase. Like I was going to say, I'm the leftovers, folks. You, so. You're the leftovers? I'm the no, leftovers. but I am ready for seconds, let me tell you, after watching this movie. I, I am too. I was I, I came back and told, you know, Janelle how, how she's a big she's a big Patrick Dempsey fan because she watched Grey's Anatomy and everything. So I told her I was like, you probably should really watch this movie. Um she just she watched the trailer and didn't think it was anything she really wanted to see. But anyway, so Brandon and I went to see it. And uh I gotta say, uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but uh getting started here. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Um, I mean, I loved the fake trailer before the Grindhouse movies and thought it was so funny and clever. And I love that it didn't take itself too seriously and kind of thumbed its nose a little bit, you know, and it was kind of campy. Um, and when I heard that, uh, you know, when I first heard that they were making the machete movies, I was kind of like, oh, man, I, I, I honestly, I thought that they should have done Thanksgiving first. I mean, I thought that one looked like it would have been more of a uh my kind of movie um so but uh, when i was so happy to hear that they were actually going to get this one done so um katie you want to kick us kick us off the discussion and put it in our nice little package like you do so well i will but first i like to know jay how are you doing oh i'm well, sorry i thank did you I left, for I, asking i'm so sorry I'm like so, i, I would, said Actually, I'm going to change you to. I'm going to change you to the third wheel in about three seconds here. Um, I'm doing. I'm doing good. Working on projects, busy, living a life, and uh, enjoying the time that I have. That's about. That's about uh, all I can say during this holiday season. I will say, you know, uh, go out and watch these films, whether it's Thanksgiving or it's a Wonderful Night, whatever it is. Support this kind of horror because. The box office is looking more and more like nothing is sticking. Uh, not even the numbers that would be impressive anymore are no longer impressive. So go out and watch it because sooner or later they won't be in the theaters anymore. So that's all I'm going to say about that. That is true. That that's is true. Very true. And 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 I still, you know, as much as I, you know, I, I watch stuff at home, but to me still there's nothing. And maybe this is because I come from the generation of, you know, used to be that that's the only way we could get movies really until cable came along yes i remember when cable first came along uh but you know i just think that there's nothing like a experience in the theater the smell that even if you don't get popcorn the smells and that everything i mean i don't know i just there's something to be said about a you know experience a movie on the big screen you know in a in an audience well, one thing I'll throw out there before Katie jumps in and, and presents Thanksgiving, um, I was looking at the numbers, and one thing I, I have to give horror fans credit for is they are hopelessly devoted, and they're also very hopelessly romantic with their films, because <laughs> this film just scored a little over $10 million, which honestly is not really that impressive. But if it gets close to its budget, it's okay. It's okay, and it justifies more films. I got to tell you something, folks. The fact that Thanksgiving barely cracked double digits says something. Um, I'm just saying. It, it, people came out, scored a little under four million, three and a half, four million over the weekend. I don't know what the previews were on Thursday night. Uh, we, Susan and I, had a chance to go see on Thursday night, but it, I got to be honest. For a movie that had a lot of hype to it, not a very impressive box office. Just saying. I I will actually, I mean, we, we went on Saturday. We originally had tickets for Friday. Um, and I always try to get tickets like in the middle. I don't like to sit to the side. I don't know, call me bougie, whatever. Um, but Friday, it was slim pickings on, on finding seats, at least at my theater. I mean, we were. I was going to have to sit off to the side. I mean, there were not very many seats available. 
Um, I mean, there was like one little row that had like, you know, a couple of seats and we wouldn't, one of us was going to have to sit next to somebody and one of us wasn't. I mean, um, we went on Saturday and we were able to get better seats, but it did end up, I mean, the, the, the screening was pretty, pretty full. Uh, I would say at least three quarters full. And that was a 140 showing that we went to. Over so 3,200 was... screenings or 3,200 screens. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, the concessions ate all the money. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know. All right, Katie. All right. Let me go. So Thanksgiving directed by Eli Roth and written by Jeff Rendell and Eli Roth. Uh, if you were unaware, Thanksgiving was a originally a trailer during the middle of Grindhouse. Uh, the first trailer of the Grindhouse was Machete. Then it was Thanksgiving by Eli Roth and Don't by uh, Edgar Wright. And then a few others like from Rob Zombie and some others. Uh, but Thanksgiving uh, now is a feature starring Patrick Dempsey, Gina Gershon, uh, Rick Hoffman, who is a Eli Roth staple. And a few other people that I was not aware of, uh, I, I think they're kind of new on like the Tiki Talkie and all that stuff, but up and coming stars, very uh, kind of a Scream 7 sort of gamey that, um, or Scream in its originality. It's very, at least they kind of look like high schoolers, even though I think they're probably in their early 20s. Fine by me. Uh, but Thanksgiving starts off, it is um, actually Thanksgiving. Uh, a store is going to have its Black Friday sale. All these people are coming in. And that is when there's another character that I want to make note, the very thick Massachusetts accent that is so beyond overwhelming that it's like, wow, is that really how people speak in Plymouth? <laughs> Which was almost somewhat daunting considering that half the cast has this accent and the other half does not have a single accent at all. Yeah. Whatever. Was what? That's where, the, yeah, that's where the humor came in. It is a Black Friday sale. There, it turns into a Black Friday massacre because people are breaking down the doors. They're running over um, people with shopping carts. There's many reasons why this could have been stopped or prevented, and it was not. We then go to a year later, uh, John Carver, the mask, the man who is, um, you know, the iconic person from Plymouth, that right there, the John Carver mask, I think is going to be the new uh, horror. Uh, it's going to be the new um, horror icon, I think, because one thing about this film, as soon as it was done, I could see many, many sequels coming. But the person who is doing revenge, they are now uh, seeking revenge regarding the people who they feel like were to blame because of the people who got killed. Honestly, I can see why. There's a number of people who, yes, this was their fault. They were either dicks, they were completely incompetent, they were totally greedy. There was one person, though, that um, uh, passed that I did not think deserved to get what she got. Um, she's a little high schooler. I don't want to uh, give away who she was. I do not think her demise necessarily uh, needed to happen the way it did, because I feel like there are other people that, um, you know, deserve to die. Any case, the kills are fantastic. They're very much in the vein of like a holiday thing. You know, they have lines like, um, you know, 50% off. It's like, um, there's not going to be any leftovers. I have to give credit to this kid who actually says like, I'm not going to be 50% off. It's like, Good for you for being able to say that line and not like laughing your ass off because that was so ridiculous. I think it has nice nods to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and My Bloody Valentine. I like the fact that they actually try and throw you on who the killer is with the height of the person who is John Carver. I've said this in reviews past where a lot of times horror movies are effing up where you've got a six foot five guy who's a killer. And then when you find out the reveal, it's like a five foot eight or five foot person. I'm like, yeah, no, that's just bad. What are you doing? This time, I guarantee they did this on person. 
they did this on purpose. They have the John Carver be like maybe five, six, five, eight, because they want you to think it's a certain person. Uh, 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 uh. I'm not going to reveal who it is, but uh, 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 and good for you for throwing us off. I like the reveal. I thought uh, the casting was great. Um, I love seeing Patrick Dempsey. I love seeing Gina Gershon in a movie. Yeah, I haven't I... seen her in a um, movie in a in a while. And I yeah. want to see Rick Hoffman. I feel like he's, if he's not in an Eli Roth film, I don't know if he gets cast in anything else. Um, he plays the mm -hmm. owner of this store where the um, massacre happens. I thought it was solid. Did I want it to be like the trailer in Grindhouse? Yes. I wanted to be grittier. I wanted to be like that little static on the film. I wanted to have that, you know, oh, this is Thanksgiving. All that stuff. However, 2007 was a very different time, and there were also very different people involved in this film in 2007, meaning production companies. We shall not say the devil's name because we all know what I'm thinking, what I'm talking about. So if they wanted to change some things so it had nothing to do with that, fine. I'm totally cool with that. I think it was interesting that one of the key scenes that everyone remembers from the trailer, though, they majorly changed for the more, uh, I feel like the um, ge generation that definitely doesn't like to see the form of any person, or I will say it like that, but I thought this was a finger licking good time. I <laughs> thought it was a cornucopia of, of carnage. I thought um, I wanted seconds as soon as I got done. And I like the fact that there was a little bit of a, you know, nod to thanks to uh, Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino at the end. Um, yeah, I say see this film uh, in the theater. Uh, I liked that. Yeah, this was a revenge killer who definitely just wanted revenge on the people and not necessarily on the pets that usually get um, the shaft when you're in horror films. So that was a nice little thing that they changed that. Um, but yeah, I say see this film. Yeah, I I I agree for um, pretty much most of what you said. I I did find it was interesting. I didn't know that Gina Gershon was in this until until she showed up on the uh, the screen. That was kind of a pleasant little surprise because I like you said I hadn't seen her really in anything for a while. Um, I did think that it was kind of uh funny how they they went to the lengths to make it obviously is supposed to be a walmart and that they're going to but it it looks so much like walmart it's i'm surprised that they were able to get away with it even though they call it right mart or whatever they want to call it but, um but um i really wasn't surprised at all with the reveal of, of who the killer was at the end um it didn't really take much away um i it would have been nice to be surprised i had a different i had a different idea that i think may have worked a little, uh, actually a little better um uh, that i'll share with you guys after you guys want to talk about what you liked and what uh what you thought about it jay well let me preface it first by saying yes you should go see this film um agreed for me, I was lucky enough to see my uh, It's a Wonderful Knife and Thanksgiving in roughly a week's time. And I'll preface this by saying I'd rather I enjoyed It's a Wonderful Knife more than Thanksgiving. With that being said, I will take a page out of Katie's book. And I want to say it's great to see Ty Olson in a role and he's been he's been one of my favorite actors he's really come a long way and it was great to see gina gershon's wig in this movie because she lasted about as long as that in this movie spoiler alert that's why i put it as my caption there uh with that being said yeah thanksgiving is a a fun gimmicky slasher film that trends in about every other way not really reinventing the wheel Mm -hmm. um, it took it took what felt like a millennia for Eli Roth to finally get greenlit to be able to make this film, uh, because I believe it's Sony Pictures, if I'm correct, who 
was one of the head production companies for Thanksgiving. Yes. And looking at this here, I'll be honest with you folks, I don't remember any of the trailers. Nothing stuck with me from that. And Death Proof is one of my fit, top 10 favorite horror films. Um, it's good to see that Eli Roth, after a long, long time, uh, finally is, is back in the saddle. Maybe this is his renaissance now as a horror filmmaker. You know, we did the clock inside the walls or whatever, the house with the clock inside the walls. I think that's mm -hmm. what it was with Jack Black, the Green Inferno. But yeah, I hate to say this, but, you know, this is Eli Roth's wheelhouse. Gory kills, uh, pretty, you know, pretty uh, self-reflective genre tropes, uh, characters that really you shut your brain off on, which is fine. Um, and, but again, just like e. Roth, Eli Roth's films, most of them don't make money. So that's why probably a good reason why it took a long time for it to get made. Now, on the positive side of it, it's a lot of fun. The opening scene uh, at Price Mart, Walmart, Your Mart, My Mart, whatever it's called, <laughs> um, is really, for a long time now, it's one of the best opening sequences I've seen in a long time. And, you know, if it, you'd have to be under a rock not to realize that this is Eli Roth's little statement about capitalism and the holidays and everything else, which is great. Yeah, you know, it? it's horror. You know, it's it, that's why I always say about horror. Horror is a platform for people to say all kinds of messages and themes and everyone's enjoying the shock rather and absorbing the message without really feeling like they're being taught something or learning something or or being exposed to something they don't like. And the cast is great. I myself, I'm not in, in as much love with Patrick Dempsey as everyone else is. Um, as soon as I saw him on there, I mean, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, they cast him in the role. Hey, it's kind of similar to Screen 7, which I had said before as well, um, where it's like a Screen 7 or a Screen Mask, or I know what you did last summer, or I know what That's, Thanksgiving did yeah. for Christmas last week, whatever you want to go by. Um, so you kind of have to figure that he's got some sort of role, because in all the Screen films now, if you don't figure it out within the first 30 minutes, you're never going to figure it out. Because they always cast these actors or actresses to be able to be in that role. I don't necessarily agree that the John Carver mask is going to be the staple of the next fashion trend of, of horror 2024. But I do think it is a very cool mask. And I like the, the concept of what Eli Roth does. Taking, you know, creating what, what may or may not be a sustainable character in John Carver. You know, it, it falls into every other slasher trope. And character profile. Um, I say go with the is, with the melted one. That one was well. Cool. The melted one was really cool, and and that's yeah. one of the things I I did enjoy. I mean, as a horror fan, I really did enjoy the kills. Um, I have no idea why they switched it to a killer clown it, during the parade. Made no sense whatsoever. Very off character, off brand for what they yeah. were doing. That was a um, little... may, maybe a little bit of lazy writing, also. Just saying, but I will give also credit. Uh, EY brings the people that got him there. Uh, uh, Milan is uh, DP. Uh, mm -hmm. In this case, Brandon Roberts, I believe, as the composer, did A Quiet Place, did Logan. Uh, the music fits it very much as, I guess you could say, a period piece. But, Katie, I completely agree with you. And one of the things I love about this film is the humor. And I get yeah. a great kick out of the, 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 the choice for accents, as well as the aspect of, you know, how self-reflective the massachusetts community is for those who have never been to massachusetts or have only heard the stories yes they are quite an interesting group up north um and they are it's not a shock just like you know it's uh in it's a wonderful knife that both towns are very fixated on their holiday that's what represents them and it's like you got you got to like sort of wonder, you know, if it's more of less of a town and more of a cult that goes along with this. But it is very funny to see some of this this dialogue brought by these characters, you know, less over the top in Thanksgiving than it was in its wonderful knife with Justin Long, but it definitely uh captures what we expect from a capitalistic holiday, which unfortunately 
uh, Black Fr Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and Christmas have all become now, you know, yeah. and they've been like that for a long, long time. But in but having the slasher um, subgenre play into this, and having the massacre at the beginning, which was so well choreographed, so well crafted, great pacing, um, a wonderful lead in, and uh, a great build towards because a lot of times these events will just happen, and there's no rhyme or reason. There's a rhyme and a reason for everything with it. And it's absolutely wonderful. It's probably my favorite part of the entire film. As the film goes on, it really loses me. Uh, but it's still worth seeing because, folks, again, it's only made a little over $10 million. It's probably going to drop greatly after Thanksgiving. Maybe you'll get a few stragglers in because horror is so niche. But I'm going to tell you, go out and see it. Go out and see It's a Wonderful Night for a hit shutter and support indie horror, even if Eli Roth is gotten away from a lot of indie horror. And I will say this was a hard weekend for it to come out. I know people yep. don't think that, but there were like seven films that came out this weekend that people, I don't think understand. You've got uh, the prequel to hunger games, which right. was number one. You've got now you've got all these awards contenders coming out like Saltburn and a number of other ones that came out this weekend. Plus, you've got Thanksgiving. This was a huge plate. And I don't know about you guys, but I know in Chicago, almost every single kid, the entire CPS is off this entire week. So, I mean, people, it's not like they just had the weekend and then the Wednesday before Thanksgiving to see films. Like, right now, you've got a bunch of kids and teenagers. This is all they can do. So, it's like, if they're not pumping up that marketing for it, they're losing out on money because honestly, <clears throat> kids, I mean, what you want them to like hang out with their friend, hang out with their friends in the movie theater. It's like this is where you get them. I forgot to mention um, another while I thought they, you know, had with the uh, there's a scene around a table that very much reminded me of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I do want to name a screen queen who had a very small part. It's in the beginning. She plays grandma. Oh my God! Yes, yes, Lynn, Lynn Hansen, Lynn Griffin, who, um, better known from Black Christmas and Curtains, and if you know it, Strange Brew was in the beginning, mm. which I thought that was great to see, you know, a horror icon, um, in the beginning of the film. Um, I agree with you. Yeah, no, I mean, horror has always been a genre that can talk about topics freely without judgments that um, I know a lot of other genres can't do. As you were saying, which, you know, having the main point of the Black Friday be about the disgustingness of capitalism and the fact that, no, people should be with their families. They should not be at a store trying to get a TV that they probably already have and running over people and bashing people at five in the morning or midnight and end up, you know, people getting killed. And I love that he brought that up. I actually think that Black Friday um, little um, beginning of the film is better than the entire film Black Friday itself. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Thought that was that e. But I do want to give something to production design. I mean, obviously, there's not going to be stuff in all those boxes. That looked like an, a hugely full, like completely full uh, store so good for them that they did all mm -hmm. that stuff I know people may not think that's a lot but I mean it takes a lot to make you know for the people behind the scenes to do all that stuff that's a lot of work and I also want to give a shout out to a friend that I met at a fest Justin Harding he did Making Monsters he was the either first AD or second AD of this film kudos to you my friend um, I saw him in the credits and he's a great guy so if you get a chance Watch Thanksgiving, watch Making Monsters. It's great. Uh, I'll throw something out there real quick. And uh, this is something, Katie, you had brought up. I don't want to see a sequel to this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to see a sequel. You know why? Because this is exactly the problem with the genre. The genre is too busy multiplying like possessed rabbits rather than putting out original content. And this is a problem with it because... Obviously, this, this film's just going to make back its budget. And again, 
if it makes any money, it's a success in the horror fans' eyes. It is any money. I made 50 cents on this film. Guess what? I'm going to make 12 sequels to it. I'm sorry. It's a good gimmicky film. It's a fun film. It's, what, 15 years in the making, at least? 16. Uh, yeah. 16 years in the in making. It's a film that's a good standalone film, but we don't need to see any more of these films. We, we did good with what we got. Holiday horror anthologies don't seem to do really well. We've seen several of them uh, recently. They just don't seem to do well for the most part. But give credit to what they have and what they've done. And uh, hopefully uh, Thanksgiving, you know, becomes a cult classic. That's what I can hope for. Yeah, I I, uh, I, I went into this ex really expecting it to be... Um, it, it reminded me a lot of I Know What You Did Last Summer. And that's well, especially kind of, the end, yeah. Yeah, and well, I meant even... Pro I mean just seeing the trailer it just it just be handed that feel to it to me um but uh i think you know i liked it had just the right amount of humor not too much too much would have been it would have been a way of it it had the right amount of humor where it went over the top was where it was supposed to go over the top with the kills and the gore and the splatter everywhere that was kind of that was kind of cool um and what i really loved about the whole Black Friday shopping thing at the supermarket is they used almost, you know, those all those tropes that you used to hear about when people would line up at, at outside stores at, you know, four o'clock in the morning uh, and, and, and be, start and, you know, old ladies fighting over toasters and pillows and, you know, waffle wires, <laughs> baby. Yeah, waffle that's, irons. that's what I loved about it because you'd hear people. I mean, I, 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 I never, I only went a couple of times and I never saw it, but I had heard stories about old ladies getting into fist fights over a pillow on good on, on uh, Black Friday. And I was like, that's just crazy. Um, and I mean, really, Black Friday is really not what it used to be uh, with everybody doing so much shopping online. So it's really not what it used to be. But I think the timing, it worked out pretty well to it's it's far enough removed from the, what it used to be that we can make fun of those people now and you know we can laugh about it now where well you know. oz i'll i'll tell you something let's 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 pull the curtain back here so my sister lives up in massachusetts and for the better part of seven years not minus COVID and another year i have shopped in massachusetts at 5 a.m every black friday you are insane sir so I love it. I, I love it. And you're right. As someone who worked many years and many Black Fridays in media stores of all places, Blockbuster, Sam Goody's, Walden Books. Oh, I used to work at Video Game Exchange, it, man. So, it, trust you me. know, I even um even the electronic boutique as well. Um it's it's not what it used to be. It used to be insane to be mm -hmm. there in those things. However, though, what I will say is no longer is it five or six o'clock in the morning. Yes, stores do open up still. Many do. But it is 9 o'clock in the morning when everyone comes out when it gets to be like that. And I'll tell you what, the folks up in Massachusetts, they do have their moments. Going to their malls, it is an experience to say the least. And you could see why Eli Roth went ahead and did what he did. And part of this film was shot in Massachusetts. Uh, the rest of it was shot up in Canada, I think in Ontario. And it's good to see films being shot in Massachusetts. Uh, hats off to Stacey Buchanan and Jessica Bar or Jess Bartow uh, almost a decade ago doing the documentary about why horror has left the Massachusetts area. Filmmakers like Eli Roth and Adam Green, well, not really Adam Green because he still does, but Rob Zombie and so on and so forth have left Massachusetts for a lot of reasons and have filmed everywhere else. It was great to see Eli Roth, where, even if it was just part of the film, shoot in Massachusetts. And hopefully it was the, the apartment store, because that would be, that's very funny and very entertaining in what they do. And give credit, you brought up about the first AD and AD, give credit to the assistant directors for directing those crowds and getting that choreography right. Hats off to them, because those kills and whomever the editor is, I didn't look up who the editor was, 
but great job of assembling Michelle the Conroy and Michael Al Aller. I'll have to look up because I they don't ring a bell on stuff yeah. that, that has been done before, but a wonderful job on the post side getting this right with the sound, with the edit. Yeah, the, um, the sound was good, music was good. Yeah, the color I, was good. With the yeah. when she's looking on the phone, production design with that table set up and the way that, that builds, that's a great th uh, thematic element when it comes to it. So I just want to give credit to the people behind the scenes as well. One thing that I wish, especially with um, it playing Black Friday, I really, I think it would have been very kitschy and funny if uh, Eli Roth would have put in, and this is a spoiler because it's not in their kids, but this is what I would have wished, if Eli Roth had found like an old Cabbage Patch kid and put it in the store to like and see all these people just dogpile on it because jingle honestly, all the way. It's like or a tickle me Elmo. I mean, yeah. that, those are those are uh, core memories uh, of news segments that I cannot get out of my head. Where they show people like trampling over each other and like almost like killing a kid, like try and get a doll. It's like one. Why the hell are you bringing your kid at, um, you know, Black Friday at five in the morning? It's like either don't go or get a babysitter. I don't know. But I think that would have been a very kitschy, like a little thing as a reflection of capitalism. If they would have had like some sort of like doll that everyone just went ape shit over. But I mean, they had the uh, waffle iron. So there's that. <laughs> there's that. And I'll tell you what, folks, you want to. A mass hysteria film, watch Jingle All the Way. It is a wonderful profile of exactly <laughs> what we're talking It's a PG version of Thanksgiving, folks. Yes. That uh, is yeah, true. One thing, I, that that uh, shopping cart kill, that was, oh, that it was, was great. That was brutal. And that was, yeah, I was, oh, man. And then and then driving around with the scalp on the wheel. I mean, because and, and immediately what I thought of, I don't know if, it, if this was with you guys, was immediately I thought of, getting that cart at the grocery store or whatever that has the tape around it or something that has, has been wound around the wheel and you kind of like it's exactly what I thought of when I, I was like well she's got the scalp instead of the, the tape the tape from the boxes or whatever but uh anyway so yeah I I I agree with you guys I mean it's definitely worth I think going to see it was it was better than what I expected I expected it to be really cheesy and not take itself seriously which which it didn't but I was pleasantly surprised because I thought uh, leading up to the, the, the climax of the movie, the, 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 the ending, I thought I was just kind of getting through the movie. I mean, I was entertained and all, but I thought, you know, huh, it's just, it's just kind of, you know, a mind numbingly thing. It's kind of be one of those things you watch it once and it's just kind of like, you know, whatever. But then by the end of it and once the reveal and all the, all the circumstances come out. I was actually, I was like, actually, it's kind of actually kind of a decent story. I mean, like you said, Jay, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's not anything you've never heard before, but I think it was unexpected that it would have that depth of a, I guess, motive. I mean, especially, you know, when you see the sonogram picture and everything else, you know, it's just kind of like, oh man. Oh, know? they've never spoiler. done that before. They've never done that before. I mean, spoiler, come on. Spoiler, spoiler. It's always spoilers. And it's going to be I a major spoiler. spoiler before. It's going to yeah. be a major spoiler when I talk about way I would have probably think, I thought it was going and where I might have gone with it, but, but go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I mean, it, you know, it was it was it was a fun movie. You go to it, you Absolutely. realize it's EY Roth. It's not going to be, you know, very deep of a film. It's meant to be horror comedy at the core of it. Very mm -hmm. bloody, very gore. But I'm going to tell you, folks, you want something with a little more substance. Go see It's a Wonderful Knife. Tyler McIntyre does a tremendous job. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Are you no. kidding? No. Okay. Dude. Well, well, we'll talk good. about that in another one, but no. Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say to you folks that when I you guess I'm going to be the tiebreaker on that one, I guess. It's it's a wonderful knife. I'm going to tell you. Spoiler alert. They take something and they actually reinvent it somewhat. Instead of taking the same old crap and the same old tropes that they do all the time. So I'm going to say, say, go see it to support it. And you know what? You make your own judgment on it, folks.
Okay. Well, we'll do that, and we'll do a, we'll do our Christmas episode, and I'll break the tie. It's a so, fun holiday double feature. I will say that, especially if you're able to go into true. a drive-in. I mean, that's a fun time. I will say Thanksgiving and It's a Wonderful Knife um, is a fun double feature. If we're doing spoilers, are we now doing spoilers for Thanksgiving? We I, we always do spoilers. It's always across. All right. Our so patients, here's so. a spoiler for Thanksgiving. When you find out what the reveal is, and who the person is and the killer and while all this stuff is doing that. One thing I was thinking about that I thought was did not make sense of that at all is, yeah, fine. I get it. So there's supposed to be an affair. There's supposed to be this couple that's doing that. If that was the case, I don't think that significant other of a person would then go to their work to bring them, um, Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving dinner because they were so busy with her. I don't think they would go to that extreme when they were going to leave that person. I mean, I know it's a small thing. And if you don't have that, then, um, that person it's, you basically don't have the premise of why the whole film, but I was just, it's like the fact that I, I don't know, there's something with, with that, that I was like, mm, all right. Yeah. It, it, I'm being vague. I'm being very vague because it's like, yes, I know it's spoiler, but it's like, that's a significant part of the film of like who the spoiler is and who, but I just didn't think that really went with what's supposed to be going on. And I'm, I'm going to go back to something you said about the physical attributes of the killer. Um, I actually thought the height at some points didn't match with who it ended up to be. No, yeah, but, that's the thing. But yeah. the other but the other part that I noticed also is this the killer was in in very in some scenes much thinner than the person who was revealed to be, which led yeah. which was leading me to believe it may be someone else. Yeah. And not not who they wanted you to think, which was the obvious the boyfriend. Um, and the way I thought would actually may have been a really interesting twist was I was expecting Gina Gershon to be the killer at the end, that she didn't really die. And then she came, she, that's, I was kind of thinking because it was, they were very, it was very slender and it just did not seem to fit. I wanted to say it was going to be who it was, but I was like, it just, he's not that thin. And in, in some areas, when I saw, when you would see the guy from the side, especially when he was cooking the you know the, the the mom in the in the oven and stuff, when you would see him from the side, he looked super super thin, and much thinner than the who it ends up being. So uh, I just thought that might have been an interesting twist, as if if come to find out that she didn't really die at the at the end, and maybe she just shows up with a patch of. A patch of hair missing from her skull or something. I don't know. But that was just me. Well, I, I think the inconsistencies on the killer play nicely because you're guessing, is it one person? Is it two people? Yes. You know, when it comes to it. But I, I'm sorry, Oz. Gina Gershon looks pretty flat. Yeah, that's, she was pretty dead. And, and, yeah. that, and that's one of the brilliant hey, things seen, I love about it. With the cards going things. back and forth and they're fighting and they're going over her body. Enjoyed that quite a lot. I will say that. So, <laughs> you know, it. You, you know what? Honestly, for what whomever made the decision to make this film said to Eli Roth, do whatever you want. Just make it within. It can't be like you want it to be in that trailer. It can be gory. It can be bloody. It can be just don't push it too much. And he did everything that he was supposed to do. I agree with Katie. I would have liked to have seen it be more like the Grindhouse trailer, at least in that style. But nowadays, and especially after Grindhouse Double Feature, why it was very cool to go see it, it flopped. It failed at the box office. And they would never do that again. And I'll tell you what, if Sony didn't make this movie and the production company associate, this would have never gotten made, folks. I'm sorry. It never would have gotten made. So, because no one's interested in doing it except for core horror fans and Eli Roth. 
Well, I mean, you know, like I said, there's a number of things that went on in 2007, including Dimension and Miramax and Weinstein and mm-hmm. uh, company that I think, I mean, there, pro- there could probably still be attributes of that original trailer that they still have the ownership of, no matter True. what. I mean, I know there's stuff that Kevin Smith has said that he's like, I would love to have to sell this on Blu-ray and all this stuff, but unfortunately, I still don't have right. ownership of it. And you know, you sell your soul to the devil. That's what happened. So while and also different things that happened during that time, possibly with actors and actresses, possibly with people doing different things behind the scenes that we all know that happened that were nefarious. That if this is what they had to do, um, so that that part was done that's fine by me uh i get that and it is unfortunate for many different reasons you know of things that happened in the past but i thought this was solid this is a solid horror Ooh. film you don't Ooh. get a lot of yeah. well i mean technically in the day in the back of the day you've got a lot of horror in november i mean november is classic for i mean nightmare on elm street uh hellraiser um silent night deadly night i mean this is technically supposed to be a big month for horror, especially, you know, before the end of the year. And you haven't seen that in a while. So I'm glad that, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is out to give us something. Give us that blood. Give us that gore. Give us that, um, you know, that little bit of gobbly googly bits that we um, like to see. And also do the humor with it. I mean, I personally love the fact that, yes, spoiler, when he cooked up that stepmom and then he sliced that thigh meat and put it on the plate. Bravo. Bravo. You guys didn't do the first one. I thought that was great. It's like that thigh meat. Nicely done. Nicely (laughs) done. And I mean, the practical effects look great. It's like, if you guys haven't seen this, dude, one no, I mean, there are a lot of decapitated heads. And they look spot on to the people that they are supposed to be. That, mm-hmm. from what I understand, that is not the actors and actresses. That is actually practical effects of a decapitated head. Well done, makeup department. You guys did a fan freaking tastic job. Agreed. Yeah, that that's one thing we didn't really touch on was the how how good the practical effects were. Well, you expect it from Eli Roth. I mean, yeah, just watch Cabin yeah. Fever. Watch Hostel, you know, you 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 expect it from yep. him and the people he works with. But one thing I'm going to say, I know Katie and I are button heads a little bit on this with, with uh, It's a Wonderful Knife and Thanksgiving. But I'm going to say, no matter what, folks, it's, it's a good thing that we're arguing about two horror films that are out here that are promoting filmmakers who have a lot of talent. You know, yeah. How, Tower McIntyre is on his way up with Tragedy Girls and now It's a Wonderful Knife and Eli Roth, exactly. Exactly. And Eli Roth has been a staple for many years within the horror genre. So go see both of them. And if you like one or the other, go for it. I like It's a Wonderful Knife more. She likes Thanksgiving more. But in the truth of the matter, we're both going out and supporting and watching both films. And that's the bottom line for it. That is that is the bloody blessing that we offer to you. That's the bottom line because J.K. says so. That is a gift that just keeps on giving everybody. So <laughs> Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, the movie and Thanksgiving this week. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm just, happy Thanksgiving. But, yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. I hope you all have, have seconds and have plenty of leftovers to take home for Turkey sandwiches. And uh, thanks. As, as Katie said, thank you for watching all five of you. Um, <laughs> please like the, like the, two more. Look at that. Yay. No. <laughs> like the like the channel and drop a comment if you'd like, and we'll give you a shout out on the next episode. Um, and uh we'll be back uh hopefully soon with a uh with a Christmas episode. Sounds good. So, so enjoy your holiday, safe, everybody, folks. and uh try not to eat too much. Gobble gobble. All right, we'll see you in the next one.
just want to bring up one thing real quick. So what's everybody been up to since we uh, last got together? And what is that? Oh, is that the Death Fruit or the, the Grindhouse double feature? Oh, the Grindhouse. It's the Grindhouse double feature. And Very cool. I love this thing so much that I got them individually because that's the only way you could get them. Those are the ones and I And I have those. I have this. Ah. Oh, I have I have the Rolling Stone one. Somewhere. I also have the Rolling Stone. <laughs> yep. Oh wow. I think uh, someone's I think someone's a Grindhouse fan. Yep. Oh, I just, love just seeing this bit. in the theater. Grindhouse in the theater was amazing. Oh no, and... I, I went I went to see him both in the theater too. Oh yeah. Theater. It was it was so so good. Opening night, I remember this specifically at Webster Theater. After seeing those trailers and everything, it's like I wanted Thanksgiving and I wanted don't. And I'm still waiting for Edgar Wright to do that. Um, but yeah. Uh thank you. I'm so glad they made Thanksgiving. Uh so yeah, let's talk am, about it. I am too. I it's it's funny because I was it was when that came out, it was at the theater and I had just gotten in a fight with Blake's mom and I was like, I'm out of here. I'm not I'm just gonna go and I I went and watched two movies back to back, and it was it was fun. It was fun, and the, and I think the the best part, the, the most enjoy. I, I think it was surprised me the most was the the fake trailers at the beginning. You know, with the machete and Thanksgiving, and I mean, it was that was really that was that was a good time, and that was one I went to by myself. A lot oh, of people yeah. I know don't um, go to movies or don't like to go to movies by themselves. I usually don't because someone usually always wants to go with me. But I will go to a movie by myself if no one else wants to see it. I'm like, how about yeah? I'll go by myself and I'll enjoy it. And I won't have to listen to you crunching your crowd, your stuff next to me. So 